Hello everyone. Let's welcome again uh, into the one of the series that is interview series. So today in this session we will talking about one of the company that is a Kongsberg Digital. So I will tell you what is the detail about this Kongsberg. So this is basically 2016 uh, startup, and uh, this basically deals into the the gas and uh, petroleum type of things, as well as they are recently move into the AI. and uh, digital marketing and all so there i, I will try to cover uh, the interview process with the dot net plus angular let's start this session so agenda for this one we will try to cover c sharp esp dot net dot net core sql and angular in the c sharp side what they ask is first question from their side is async await so we need to explain the what is the benefit of async await and uh, there we need to tell the parallel programming things and all and there is a one good question is like uh, it internally create the new thread to serve the request and how it is behave like that one so because everything is the reference type here so internally it is uh, creating this one but uh, somehow it is it is using the same reference so you can say Uh, overall it is not creating the new thread for this one but you need to uh, get more information you need to uh, read the things related to this the next question is a static and singleton so in the static we know that uh, it is shield type of class and uh, singleton we can uh, inherit the other class also and uh, yeah state static is basically maintained by the clr so we have no control here and singleton is basically Uh, to use or create the single instance of that particular class so or any more things you can mention here but the, these are the mostly the biggest point which we need to mention into this one the next one is can we create the static constructor here the question is uh, can we create the static constructor yes we can create the static constructor but to initialize the the local uh, variable of the class because you know that when uh, any of the like constructor is there, like non static constructor is there, so ev every time this static constructor will be run before the any other type of constructor and we can't create the parameterized constructor of static the next one is the solid principle and importance so there i uh, we need to explain the each and every point with the small uh, description or the you can say the one liner things the next one is the delegate and event so what is the delegate and how uh, what is the event there and you need to put the example here like uh, any of the action we are doing so that is performed by the event and delegate is basically using or taking the reference of the methods and we can pass this one as a reference things because uh, this will store into the as a reference type into the heap other thing is like uh, related to this one is the func and action so func is basically taking the two or more input and uh, uh, returning some of the value based on the combination or the multiplication or any of any of the combination the action is basically take the input and but it's it's always a void type the next one is the what is generic so there you need to uh, give the explanation what is the generic and that will also good if you putting the the name space also for uh, collection dot generic which we are using uh, in uh, dot net as well as uh, you can uh, put some of the example like uh, list dictionary and also that will also give the good impression the next one is what is the dynamic where we are using this more so dynamic we know that internally uh, it is giving the runtime behavior and uh, it is internally using the reflection and mostly we are using into the microsoft uh, office or you can say excel because we are interact there is a uh, introps things and all so there we are basically deals with the dynamics and there is a many more also but you can put based on your uh, knowledge and all the next one is what is the benefit of reflection so we know that on the runtime we can get all the detail of the class property methods and all and we can uh, use that things reflection and for this one if that will also good if you put the assembly dot load assembly some method you can put it and how you can extract the class and the property so that will also give the good impression the next one is how to check the length of the list so the list you know that every list uh, you have the capacity so capacity is basically tell like how much type uh, element it can store so the capacity you can calculate with the 2 key power 1 something like 2 key power 1 2 key power 2 so 
based on that you can tell the length of the list so you if you need more information you can read out the one of the property of list is the capacity so that will give the more detail here let's jump on to the asp.net so in the asp.net side uh, they asked me about uh, the how to show the content of one website into the another website so there i put it the two point there the first is a uh, we have the inbuilt uh, or you can say html supported tag that is uh, iframe and the second one is basically uh, our user control because we are talking about here is uh, asp.net so in the asp.net we know that uh, we have uh, as user control the next one is the dotnet core side in the dotnet core side they start with the startup.cs so that is always the important question into the dotnet core because everything are start into the dotnet core through the dotnet uh, with the startup.cs file so please read this file or read all the function related to this one or whatever things it is doing and what it can be do for uh, in our project so you need to uh, read it uh, very deeply that is very important after that configuration service and <clears throat> config uh, configure method so that is the two most important method there so you need to read it out what is the purpose of this one and what we are configuring this one the next one is a di and how manage di in the core so we know that whenever we are adding the dependency into the configuration service because that is the inbuilt there so we need to add that things uh, and after that we can uh, access that service through the constructor in any of the controller so you need to give the explanation like this one the next one is the what is the difference between the middleware and the middle layer so whatever layer we are adding in the dotnet core with the help of uh, configuration service that we call the middleware and middle layer is you can say it's a layer which will manage the to and fro communication like if you remember like we have the three tier architecture or entire and layered architecture so there the layer which we are defining like business layer or data access layer so these uh, things are come under the layer next one is a sequence of use and and run something so we are whenever we are defining or adding any of the middleware so we need to use this keyword into the dot net core the next one is a token based authentication so you have to uh, should have the good knowledge about the token based authentication and uh, the other thing here is how to secure the token also like how what things we can implement there to make our token secure because uh, there is a concept of uh, uh, like forged token one will come into the picture csrf1 the next one is if someone read the token from the browser and how to manage this one so i mentioned here is a cross uh, forgery one so csrf concept come here you need to explain that thing here the other one is what is the course and how to enable the course so in the course you can enable uh, or you can add the middleware into the configuration service like uh, service dot add core and there inside that one uh, there is a one co more question like if you allow only the two domain for this one so there is a, some policy inside that one there is a one uh, one uh, parameter or you can say uh you can expand this one so there you can add the one policy there so in the policy you can apply only the specific uh, domain or you can allow based on your needs you can put based on uh, comma separated there and it will allow only particular domains the next one is a what is the attribute and how to create this one so that is very important question here because everyone are uh, asking this attribute things and how to create this one so attribute you can create any of the attribute like authorization or auth uh, authentication attribute you are creating or any of the validation type of attribute like uh, uh, you can say validate attribute we are using like my string or the my model property should uh, should be into the email format or the length should be uh, one to five so something that validation attribute we are using so you need to give any of the one uh, things there or one explanation here and how to create this one and how uh, how many type of attribute or the abstract class we need to inherit this one so for any of the attribute creation you always uh, need to uh, inherit the uh, attribute attribute interface or the abstract class coming on to the sql server side so in the sql server what is the sequence of the 
query execution so everyone should be aware like what is the execution here so i will tell you what is the execution here so first uh, in the query it is start from the from where group by having select order by limit so these are the sequence always the next one is what is the point to keep in mind to write the optimized approach at the db level so there you need to explain from the table to the store procedure and inside the, in between you need to explain the view at the function also and what type of optimal things you need to do into the store proc also like temporary table temp variable table everything you need to explain whatever you learn or whatever you earn from your experience the next one is the benefit of no sql db means mongodb and all so because mongodb uh, you know that no uh, sql db is there and you need to explain what is the benefit of this one the next one is the angular so the angular side uh, they are asking like how to exchange the information from child to parent component so you need to keep in mind like what type of question they are asking because sometimes we are telling directly input output things so that is not the good answer here so you need to think about like from the child to parent what things you can use so for there you need to tell like add uh, output as well as uh, event emitter things the next one can we pass the multiple template url and there's another one is also the similar type of question like can we pass the style url into the angular like multiple so we know that uh, into the component there is a these are the two of the attribute there so that we are passing as a array format so the question is can we pass this one so as per my knowledge it will uh, not be passed this one so the purpose here is template url is if you have the more than five lines complicated lines in the html you are want to write there so you should always go to the html page so that is the purpose of this one so as per my understanding it not be uh, we can't be passed multiple url or the multiple style there or you can do the experiment also and uh, let me know if i'm wrong the next one is how to restrict the service used by one only one component not the other one so how we can restrict the service here so there as per my knowledge there is a one attribute into the component itself the provider in if we are passing the service there so it will be used only by that component only so thank you so much thank you for support this one uh, let's meet in another video soon thank